Hi everybody, Damian Cole here with XLT Podcast. Special guest today is Trevor Locke, all the way from the UK. What's up, Trevor? Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. <clears throat> got our milkshakes here. Eddie's, I got a raspberry. You got a bacon maple. I've got the rest of your raspberry. Mm. You know, I learned a lot today. I didn't realize it was called a tin. All right. And, uh, yeah. Well, see. what do you call it in England? I just don't think we have this in England. I thought we would call this uh, an unusual vase. Uh, <laughs> that's what we would call it. Of course you would. Or maybe um, a broken cocktail shaker, um, a protective hat for a Smurf. Um, yeah. We, we, we have a different, we have food in England. I don't know if you've ever been to England. No. But we do have food, yeah, food. but it, um, it, comes in, it comes in different containers right. than your food. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's and much smaller portions. Right. Really. Yeah. Okay. We ordered one milkshake and look what's happened. Yeah. yeah. This is this is two milkshakes, isn't it? It's yeah. two pieces of equipment for them. That wouldn't happen in England. If you ordered a milkshake, it would come in a little paper cup about that high. Jesus. Yeah. And then you'd regret it. So sad. Yeah. It's it's different. It's just different. I mean, that means I'm enjoying myself more than I would do yeah. if I was an American. I mean, you're enjoying yourself, but not as much as I. Yeah. 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 So do they have like American diners in England? There's one famous one in uh, Soho. Um, I think it's still there. It's, uh, uh, I, I, it's, this is called Eddie's Diner, right. and there's one in Soho called Something's Diner. They're all, they're all. It's all a, always a man that owns a diner. Right, right. Um, but it's very rarely that you see the man. Yeah. We, we saw the man here, although he's yeah. not called Eddie. Right. He's called Brad. Right. You should do a podcast with Brad. I want to. Hey? Yeah. I mean, we've learned so much. Oh, I have. Shit. It's like, this is probably the best diner in the world. It is. Because it's so difficult mm. to get American food in Vietnam. Yeah. He just has to make all the food himself in a kitchen, yeah. which probably doesn't happen in any kitchen in any restaurant in America. Right, right. They just they ship it in from factories or wherever. Right. Right. They're shipping in the sausage patties. He makes his own sausage patties, you know? Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's hard to, you can't just like order straws. You literally like custom orders he, these he straws. Probably made, these ma- these were made in house. Yeah, 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 probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kids in the back twisting straws up. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I've, I, I think I've been to a diner before, but n- nothing like this. Yeah. Um, can't beat it. Cannot beat it. We didn't have a Brad for a start. No. no. I mean, Brad, guys, we ordered stuff that wasn't on the menu. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not because we're arrogant people that order stuff that's not on the menu. It's because the guy yeah. behind the bar said, don't order what's on the menu. Order this. And yeah. we just did as we were told. Yeah. yeah. And it was a good idea. Bacon maple. Crazy. Crazy. With real bacon. Fucking can't beat it. Speechless. All right. Now let's get on to you, Trevor. Let's see. Trevor, where, where are you from? Where did you grow up at? Um, I grew up in two villages. One village was called Floor, and um, that's, uh, it sounds silly in English, Floor, because mm-hmm. that's what we walk on. Um, <laughs> but actually, um, people who... Uh, who know about Spanish and Latin will know that floor means flower. Is it F L O R? F L O R E. Okay. Ah. So um, uh, eventually, when I started to learn things in my late twenties, I found out that yeah, the village I grew up in meant flower. Okay. Yeah. And there are lots of flowers in that village, and they have the most famous thing about floor. I think is that it has a flower festival every year, yeah. where the people that care about flowers open their gardens up to the public and you can walk around people's gardens and, yeah. and nosy through their windows. I mean, look at their beautiful flowers. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, floor, tiny little village. We, and I lived um, about a mile's walk from the village. I lived, I lived down a, a street that just ended in fields a long, long way from the village. Cool. So my childhood, until I was 10, was very isolated. I didn't, I didn't really have any friends. I, I, Played on my own um, with the countryside, and uh, 
and that, that was that was until I was 10 and then I moved to another village a bigger village yeah. four miles away yeah. which m I may as well it felt like I'd moved to the other side of the world it was an incredible shock yeah. um, and when I was 10 I moved to Bugbrook yeah. and that was that was a traumatic experience four miles a, a village twice the size I was right in the village I had to interact with children outside of school hours <laughs> it was a nightmare and um, and then I went, and then my secondary school was in that village. So I don't, I don't know what you have. You have a high school. So my high school uh, was in my village, um, and uh, yeah, and, I, and that's how I grew up. I grew up uh, in rough. villages. In villages, it was rough. rough. My God, it was rough. No, it was great. It was great. It was surrounded by nature. Um, a lot of. A lot of bikes, you know, yeah, yeah. Did, did everything on a bicycle, yeah. fishing, yeah. cricket, oh, so good. Um, yeah. driving around in my friends' cars, smoking marijuana, nice. and listening to Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd, nice. um, and then I learned to play a guitar, and then, you know, driving around, smoking aspirin, yeah. playing <laughs> songs, making my own clothes <laughs> on my mother's sewing machine <laughs> to be cool. Um, <laughs> It was a lovely time. Yeah, you can't have a childhood like that anymore. No, because no. Um, uh, access to the internet would tell you that you're doing it all wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I didn't know I was doing it all wrong. I thought I was doing it all right. You were, apparently. I mean, that's yeah, that's a good childhood. Man. Fishing, bikes, yeah, yeah. Getting a little older, driving around, smoking. That sounds like my childhood, except we didn't fish. You didn't fish. Or from the city, like. You don't want to eat those fish. No, would well, you know the weird thing was I didn't eat my fish. I did. I did it just, just, just uh, out of cruelty. Just yeah, 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 yeah. There was no. It was the, the, the. I liked. I was thinking about this recently. I, I just liked. I guess it's like people meditate. You know about people who meditate. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever meditated? I have. Yeah. yeah. So what do you do when you meditate? Nothing. Right. And I think that's what happens when you mm. fish most of the time. It is. It there's, is. You know, there's an exciting bit when the float yeah. sort of bobbles. Yeah. Have you ever fished? Yeah. Yeah. So the, when the float bobbles, yeah. that's exciting. Yeah. But there can be hours yeah. of nothing. Yes. And I guess you're waiting for the bobbly thing. Yeah. But often you're just sitting there God. doing nothing. And I think, uh, I think that's what it is. I think um, Englishmen. Uh, invented meditation thousands of years mm. before Buddha right. was born. Right. Yeah. On the banks of the River Neen in Northamptonshire, yes. little boys and men like me yep. were meditating. It's so beautiful. Because <laughs> yeah. England invented fishing, right? Um, Pretty much. Well, Engl I, I think in England invented everything, didn't it? It, it well, fish and chips. It, I it, mean, what? It invented Australia, New right, Zealand, you're right. Canada, America. You're, you're so football, right. Football, the internet. Did you invent football? It, well, they they were the ones. They were the first people to lose gracefully. Oh, no, okay. um, they were the first people to put the rules down. Really? You know, if you're okay. not good at something, you know, you write the rules down. Okay. That's that's what the English did. Okay. Um, they invented television. Right. The okay. Scottish invented television. Really? Yeah. But the, the, an Englishman invented the in, in, uh, internet. Really? Mm -hmm. Tim Berners-Lee. Yes. And um, what really else did they invent? Like a history lesson. Um, uh, museums, the English invented museums. Or putting things to from one place in another place. When they took all that stuff yeah. from everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Made yeah. it like a building. Yeah. <laughs> wow, damn, England sounds pretty fucking nice, man. Oh, it's it's so nice. Uh, that's why uh, England went all over the world looking for other places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, check out how nice we are. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know what you're, what are you trying to say, David? They went around being nice. Yeah. Well, well America's doing that now. We kind of took over. I don't know. Is America really independent from England? That's, uh, have you heard this? Do you like conspiracy theories? Um, I think every, there's not, everything is a conspiracy theory. I, I don't. I don't understand what isn't a conspiracy right. theory, really. Right. I mean, I think I do. I think it's like like people think uh, 
if it's in the news, if it's like on a on a on a television or yeah. on a on a website by a newspaper, yeah, uh, then it's not a conspiracy theory. Yeah, Is that right. Yeah, yeah, but it's obviously a lie if it's made it that far. Well, it's some. It's not true. Some of the stories on the news are based on real life events. Based on real life. Yes. Events. Yeah, 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 yeah. Loosely. Yes. Loosely. Yeah. 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 The whole COVID thing. Yeah. Yeah. There really was a virus <laughs> that was. escaped from the lab in Wuhan. There was. Yes. yes. So yeah, you're with yeah. me on that. It was based on truth. Right. Based on fact. So first that was a conspiracy theory, but now it's been proven to be. Um, yeah. Plausible. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. And, you know, um, climate change is based on fact. The climate is changing. Yes. Yeah. Every day, you never know. It could be yeah. rainy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be yeah. sunny. Yeah, yeah. Snow every winter. Right. Changes a lot. Yeah. So About every yeah. three months. Quarterly. It, it depends on where you are. It's <laughs> very difficult. Very difficult to make up rules about it, but you can. Um yeah, so uh, the conspiracy theory is that America is still... Um, it, it never... The Declaration of Independence was just like for show. But yeah, really actually, it's still loyal to... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. don't know. I don't know. I, was, I wasn't around back then. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Could be. It, 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 the, the events of the last few years have made me wonder if there really is... A secret government, mm. uh, and then all the other governments are sort of like uh, like puppet uh, governments. Remember, like the Soviet Union, mm. uh, you'd have you'd have a, a different leader in in yeah. East Germany yeah. or in Yugoslavia. Yeah. Was it? In, mm. I can't remember who it was in East Germany and Yugoslavia. It was yeah. that that I can't remember who any of them are. But yeah. anyway, they were kind of loyal yeah. to Stalin or yeah. to Brezhnev or, or Moscow. Yeah. And I wonder if that, you know, just because everybody agrees about a lot of ideas, you know, lots of governments think the same things at the minute about certain big uh, topics. Yeah. And you think, that's, uh, you know, is that, why? Yeah. Why, why, why? And I don't know, I don't know. Maybe it's, it's, it's always the way. It's like under Christianity, you know, we had the Pope in Rome and then all these other separate autonomous countries but they were all you know they had to get permission right. from the Pope if they wanted to do anything really big right. that's why uh, Henry VIII quit yeah remember that I said that we had a Henry we had loads of Henrys and the eighth Henry that's said he'd had enough of the Pope right because oh. he, he didn't want to have to do, ask permission uh, oh. from the Pope whenever he wanted to do something is that the Church of England guy? That's when they. That's that's how he invented the Church oh, of England. Sweet. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's still going on, or uh, the Church of England still goes on. Okay. Yeah, still yeah. goes on. Yeah, yeah. It's still called that? What is it? It's still called the Church of England. Yeah. Are all the churches in England that? No. Yeah, be. no. I mean, we have we have yeah. Catholic church. We okay. have all kinds of churches now, but okay. yeah, yeah. But officially, officially, which one's your favorite? Um. I've, I, I mean, to go into in England, my favourite one is probably Wells, the the, the cathedral in, in 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 Wells, because it's it's got an amazing clock. It's very it was very old. It was a cathedral built about a thousand years ago, right. and um, so fantastic uh, Masonic architecture. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, really yeah. weird little funny um, mm. inscriptions and decorations. Loads of stuff for conspiracy theorists there. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I mean, the, I mean, my God, the the, the <coughs> cathedrals of Europe are just yeah. are extraordinary. I mean, they they, yeah. they could be you know ossified spaceships. The yeah. St the, the mysterious stuff. They're supposed to be Christian, but when you look at all the iconography and the things mm. that are there, mm. there's loads of stuff that no one really understands what's there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, incredible things, incredible. So. Yeah, I'm a big fan of I'm a big fan of the, the the cathedrals. Not I don't like the churches so much. Okay. Yeah, the churches yeah. are a bit boring because yeah. that was the one of the things about the Church of England. You had to make a church boring. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds weird. And you invented masons too, right? Or was that the Scottish? I don't know who invented the masons. I thought the masons came were supposed to come from uh, Egypt. Was it? Oh no! I well, don't maybe know. it is a, an Anglo-Saxon thing. 
Yeah. Well, it definitely is an Anglo-Saxon thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, it's a, yeah, I think you have to be Anglo-Saxon to be in that, don't you? Okay. Yeah, I don't know much about the Masons. They have, so. they have an Asian... Um, they have an Asian Masons, I think, and a Black Masons. Yeah. It, they do, in America. Wow. Yeah. My fr- I have friends in all three. Okay. White things, you know. Black Masons. Black Masons. Pretty cool. Yeah, I think... Uh, I mean, I don't know. I had the idea of a secret society it sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not even secret. There's a big old cathedral. Like, yeah. It's called, like, the Masonic temple yeah 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 right on the top of the hill with a fucking uh pyramid with an eye in the middle right on the front of the building like yeah. that, that's not, like not secret it's my friend has a motorcycle right with a fucking mason sign on it yeah and he rides it around the city it's like, I, don't, I mean it's not secret it's not yeah like, well i think that's the thing you could walk out walk right in there right now if i wanted to yeah. talk to any mason I wanted to well I think that's the thing if you're in a secret society after a while you want people to know right um, <laughs> you know so like what's the point of keeping it a secret if, if no one you're not getting knows. any of the kudos you're not getting any yeah, of the benefits yeah, yeah, you, you know gotta, you need people to know yeah that's my secret society right. that's my <laughs> secret building you know? that's why MI6 built this massive building on the banks of London mm. for, for, for this British Secret Service ah. because everyone was like, you yeah, know, yeah. we're in this Secret Service, but no one knows. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Ah, we watch James Bond. You already know. I think that's what it was. It was people were jealous that you know they, they realized the attention they could be getting from the James Bond. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so it's like yeah. they gotta use that, that yeah. franchise to do something. So okay, so you're from uh, Bugsboro. And, and uh, floor, yeah. and then did you move to London like most teenagers? Or I, I was desperate to move out because when I was like, I was twenty when I left my village, right, to go to university. Yeah. I missed a year of school, so I had to repeat a year. Um, so I was desperate. I was like, I've been in, the, you know, I've been in the house for eighteen months because I was because I had missed school, right, so. I finally made it out, got to London, and, and that was, yeah, that was that changed everything. I haven't been back really since. To um, what? To, oh, to Bugsboro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. La, the yeah. floor. Um, yeah, I was, um, I was a country boy yeah. till I was 20, and then yeah. I went to London, I went to university in London for three years, and, um, it just was so exciting to be in London. There was a big. It was the nineties in London, you know. It was a very exciting place to be. Yeah. And yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm a city person now. I really love. It. I'm yeah. I'm quite a low energy. Uh, what would they say? I'm like I'm sort of quite sort of um, yin. I think I'm quite yin. I'm quite passive. Okay. okay? So um, I work well with active people active situations energetic situations so if I go to the countryside uh, I'll just fall asleep yeah, and, and, and for, for months yeah, whereas, whereas yeah. if I'm in a in a um, in a city yeah. the energy sort of it, it, it really sort of uh, goes well with my lethargic yeah. um, status quo sort of uh, resting yeah 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 me too bro me too yeah I'm a city guy and uh, yeah, if I go to the country, I'll enjoy it for a little bit. And I'm like, hey, just, I'm just gonna sleep all day. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's weird because when I was a kid, I was obsessed with the countryside. I lived yeah. in the countryside. I loved it. Yeah. I, you know, I spent time always in nature. Yeah. I was obsessed with. I knew all the names of all the birds, and yeah. I loved it. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's really surprising to people who knew me when I was a kid um, the way I turned out but yeah hmm. um, so I like cities I like London even London actually is too quiet for me now really yeah I don't know have you ever been to London no so London is actually if you compare it to other cities it's kind of a village it's very big it has a lot of people okay. there's, a, there's a lot of things to do yeah. but it's essentially 
very quiet. Yeah. Um, there are some noisy moments yeah. where things can get busy for a couple of hours, yeah. but constantly not really. Like, you know, yeah. Friday night between seven o'clock and midnight in certain parts of London, it's busy. Yeah. But the rest of the time, uh, you can only say it's busy underground in a, a metro, you know, a, a tube st- in a tube train. Right. The rest of the time, it's so quiet. Well, I, I spent six months in Rio last year mm. in uh, a, a place called Copacabana. Oh, when yeah. I came back to London, it w- my, my house, I live in, you know, not central London, but I live in the middle of London. Yeah. And it was so eerily quiet. Yeah, yeah. It was so quiet. Same with, you know, Bangkok. Um, Tokyo's quiet where I am in Tokyo. But uh, I find London to be, uh, and as a comedian, when I used to work every night as a comic, it was so frustrating for me that everything closed. Everything closes in London at 11 o'clock, really. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there are villages in the south of Germany yeah. that stay open later than London. Yeah. It, it's, it's really frustrating. Huh. So there isn't much of a nightlife in London, um, which... I don't care about now, but back then it was really frustrating. Yeah. I became, because of my job, I became a sort of night owl. Yeah. So I would love, I used to live in <coughs> Lima in, in Peru and I loved it there. I could go into a bookshop at midnight. Yeah. I could have a cup of coffee and browse the bookshelves at yeah. midnight. Yeah. I, could st- I could go into a movie yeah. at midnight. Nice. Uh, whereas in England, you know, the, the latest you could possibly go to a movie in England is half past eight. Yeah. Um, and all the coffee shops have shut at six. The bookshops are shut at half past five. I mean, that's not true. Some of them are open until eight. Yeah, Come on, yeah. don't exaggerate. Some of the bookshops are open till eight. <laughs> you can get a coffee at half past eight on the South Bank. So, yeah, London, I love London um, only because it has great classical music. And uh, yeah, you can go and see a classical music concert every night of the week. Right. And it does have a national gallery and, uh, and, and and some good art galleries, but apart from that, yeah. Um, and the summer in London's amazing. Yeah. The long evenings, but um, it's too quiet. What about that? Yeah. London is too quiet. Yeah. That's that's crazy. Yeah, because my sister was living there, and I was living here, and she like she sent me a picture of the street that she lived on. I was like, damn, that street is. It was like one car and it was like super wide and it was just like nobody. I was like, and I showed her a picture of Vietnam. I was like, yeah. just, just action, action, action. Yeah. So yeah, the contrast mm-hmm. must be insane when you go back home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I love it, you know. When I've been, you know, on tour like I'm at the moment, it is fantastic to go back to London. Why we go back to London at the beginning of spring? Yeah. And and the difference will be a buzz. Yeah. I was in uh, Rio yeah. last year, and I popped back for a week. I had some shows, and I, so I had to pop back for a week. Yeah. In February, I swapped yeah. the Rio de Janeiro summer for February in London, yeah. and I loved it. Yeah. I yeah. loved it. I went for cold walks yeah. in the parks, yeah. which I couldn't do. I couldn't go out in the day right. in Rio. It was right. too hot. Right. Um, I could go to some classical music concerts. Yeah. It was fantastic yeah. for a week, and it's the same for me when I go back. I, when I go back, I will just fall in love with it. It'll be wonderful. The the quiet, the little birdies tweeting in the trees, and then I go off somewhere else. Yeah. So are you? So, uh, so obviously you've been to Asia before. I miss. I, but are you doing like full time traveling now? Or I don't know. I mean, I, I never know what I'm doing, but it seems like that. Um, yeah. The first time I came to Asia, there's a great guy called Aidan Killian who um, first he just brought me to Ireland years ago. Right. And, um, and then he, when he was in Bangkok, he organized a tour for me um, four years ago. And, yeah. uh, and it was a it was a whistle stop tour really. Right. Um, but I met a fantastic guy in Tokyo called Paul Davies, and and his wife uh, Hisako at a venue called Good Heavens. Yeah. And my shows went really well there, 
in, in, in Tokyo, so I was able to go back quite quickly, and then I just realised it's a vi it, this tour is viable right, financially, and I can take my time a little bit and see a few more places, do a couple of shows in a town instead of just one, yeah. and um, COVID came, but since um, I, c I came back in, in, in November, sure. and um, it was I did two shows in Tokyo in, in November, came back in February, did three shows in yeah. Tokyo, another show in Hakuba, sure. um, I did four shows, three shows in, in Cambodia in November, and we did four shows, four or five shows just last week. Yeah. So it's it, it, yeah. it, it's it's fun, exciting. It feels like slowly I'm building a little bit of an audience yeah. Uh, yeah. in these places. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what will happen. I don't know when I'll be back. I do know when I'll be back. I'll be back in the autumn. We're organising it already. But um, uh, it's not. I don't. Things just happen. Let's say that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I go where people want me to go. So it, yeah. you know. Um, I, uh, apart from Vietnam, nobody wanted me to come to Vietnam, but somehow I'm here. Um, one person wanted me to come, and Keita wanted me yeah, to come, yeah. so that's why I came. And then I met Jack, yeah. and Jack said, "Oh, come back, come to Delat." Yeah. So yeah. So then, so that's why I'm here. Nice. And I thought because I'm coming here, I may as well make contact and ask nicely uh, to the legendary Dan Dockery if uh, if I can do his shows, and that's so that's that's what's happening. To nice. Me. Yeah. And did you meet Ankita at the Fringe Festival? Where did you meet her? I, unbelievably, uh, and this is, this is really true, and you can ask comedians, I mm. teach or, or, or I run, I coach, I do joke writing workshops online uh -huh. um, for comics uh -huh. of all levels. Uh, not all levels, um, uh -huh. but, you know, like, like uh, Louis C.K. Yeah. Uh, hasn't done it. Um, uh, he hasn't done my okay. workshop yet, um, right, right. but uh, I have some really, really good professional comics that I work with, um, and um, word gets out. I don't advertise it; it's just done by word of mouth. Yeah. And uh, Luana Matei from Romania, mm -hmm. who I saw do her first show when I went to Tokyo for the first time. Yeah. Um, She's now based in Amsterdam and tours all around Europe with, uh, she's got a couple of shows that she tours. How to Cheat on Your Husband, I think, is pretty popular. She's just toured Scandinavia, yeah. and, I, and I, d I think yesterday I saw that she's, she's now playing The Hague with another one-woman show. Wow. Anyway, Luana, during lockdowns, was doing a lot of stuff online, yeah. and I think she spread the word. So I actually met Ankita in one of my workshops nice. online, and then a year later, she turned up in London and the Edinburgh Fringe. Yeah, and I met her for oh, real. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, I was. I remember when she was going there. I was like, oh, that's so cool. That's that's awesome. Yeah, she's really cool. She, I interviewed her that day two podcasts ago. Uh -huh. yeah, just check it out. She's a she's good friend. She gave me my first show, actually. Okay, well, the snap. She gave me yeah. my first show in in in, yeah. uh, in Saigon. Yeah, 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 me too. Hey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did it at the uh, both our Saigon cherries. Uh, yeah. where was it? Bardo. Do you know Bardo? Yeah. 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 So I did it at Bardo. Yeah. 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 I wanted to go to that show, but I missed it. Don't worry. Yeah. And you can't come to tonight. No. Oh my God. And I'll have, I'll have to come back. Cause I hear. People tell me you have like a new comedy style, like the comedy, you have like this different, uh, they're telling me. Yeah, you do yeah. something different. Well, in my show, so my full length shows, are, are, okay. are, 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 I would say significantly different, yeah. Okay. What is yeah. this? Do you want to yeah. talk about it? Is Why it a not? Secret? Is it's, this a secret no, it's not really, it's really not a secret. <laughs> I mean, it is a secret in the fact that um, I'm so unknown and so few people have seen me do comedy. I, I may as well be a secret. I've known, I, I, I um, heard about it. But um, I, I, I don't have prepared, I mean, I do in some shows but the, right. the shows we're talking about um, and the, these are the ones I've mainly done for the last seven years I don't have any uh, material there's no, there's no jokes I don't, I don't say anything that I've prepared I don't know what I'm going to say and I don't know what's going to happen in the show but I know 
how the show will work. So the show usually it's it's, it's like a big conversation. Right. Only one person is ever talking at a time. Right. Um, and I, I, the audience is like a it's like an orchestra. Yeah. The audience is like an orchestra, and I am like the conductor. So I'm kind of in charge, but the music is definitely coming from them. Do you wow. see what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. so so um, I'm doing it with them. Yes. Okay. Very often, the funniest things that are said yeah. come out of the mouths of the audience. Yes. It's not. Yes. It's not funny thing that I've said about them they yeah. you know so anybody can be the star of the show wow. okay I'm like I'm like the the curator yeah the facilitator yeah. I'm in charge in one sense but it's totally cool if other people in the room participate and frequently become the show do you yes. see what I mean yeah. you know so I'm like a director of a movie where you wouldn't where the where sometimes he's in it, yeah, yeah. but sometimes he's got a very small role in it. He's still directing it, yeah. but these, this this woman's the star. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. And because you don't know what's going to happen, it, it it's um, I get a lot of repeat business. So yeah. that's why I did it a lot at the Edinburgh Fringe because Ooh. the first time I did it, I realised there were people coming back every single day to the show, yeah. um, and because they've never seen anything like it, they wow. wanted to bring their friends, hey, wow. this is something different. And then when they came the second time, it would be like so different to the time they came before. They were like, oh, it's really different. Um, because every show is completely different. It has a different vibe. The, the, you, you see what I mean? Yeah, so, oh, super cool. Yeah, now I try to sort of, um, I try to, give give shows now I try to give shows a sort of direction and a theme I give them a title and so I try to sort of direct it sometimes so right. my most recent show was the most interesting person in the room mm -hmm. and so the aim of that show was clear from the beginning yeah. we're going to find out who is the most interesting person in the room <laughs> you guys will decide I'm just going to help you find out so that's kind yeah. of got a, a direction from the beginning we kind of know where it's going to go yeah. but we don't know who's going to win and we don't know how we don't just don't know who's in the room yeah. um, and then I had another show How to Fall in Love with an Englishman right. and that the, the aim of that show is that two people who, who don't know each other fall in love yeah. um, so that's so it's become a little bit more some of them have become a little bit more but when I do stand up I'm only doing 40 minutes um, usually maximum if I'm at the headliner then and we just see what happens. Anything can happen. There's no theme. There's no topic. It's just, yeah. Um, so it's exciting for me. I yeah. think that's one of the reasons why I do it. It's it's like uh, it gives me a kick. You know, yeah. I shit myself before I go on stage. <laughs> I think what, what an idiot I am uh, for for not writing jokes like yeah. everybody else. Yeah. Um, and so I, I get a little bit of a kick, yeah. and I think the audience get a buzz. Obviously. It's fun. Yeah. They're laughing. Yeah. They're, 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 you know, they come to a comedy club to laugh. So yes, I get yeah. that. But I think they they get the extra buzz of. I don't think this. This is like it's about us. This yeah. is yeah. oh, this is unique. This is a special thing. This he cannot have told that joke yeah. ever before yeah. because yeah. it's about her and him, yeah. and they've never met each other before. You know. <laughs> So, so cool. I think that 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 is one of the reasons why I do it. Also, my jokes weren't ever very funny. Yeah. Um, so it does go a lot better <laughs> since I stopped telling jokes. <laughs> Although, uh, this last week I've started preparing uh, jokes for my... I did actually do jokes in Dalat. Right. Um, and um, and my Edinburgh one, of, one of my Edinburgh shows this year will contain jokes. Wow. So, uh, oh my God. Yeah. What's happening? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's um, that's that's what I've been doing the last uh, few weeks yeah. in 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 in, uh, in around this region of the world. Is uh, uh, well in Tokyo. I don't. In Tokyo, they just call me Trevor Lock Live. Yeah. Because okay. I have an audience there. Yeah. I have a very good uh, promoter who's now my agent in Japan. 
So I even have fans there. Yeah. So I can just go there without a title. Wow. And, and people will come. Yeah. In Cambodia, I do a show with a title. Okay. How to Fall in Love with an Englishman, right. the most interesting person in the room. Uh, um, I've and seen he, these live. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But here, I'm just doing, I'm just headlining a comedy night. Nice. Okay, so that's. <sighs> that is so cool. It's a bit more relaxed. Um, although in Dalat, I did my new show, I did share in Dalat. Uh, which is a, which which is but which was the world premiere, right. um, but um, uh, yeah. So um, it's sweet. yeah, it's it's because uh, I love crowd work. I've been trying to when we're doing this show here, it's all tourists, so I get to see people I've never seen before. Yeah, and they've obviously never seen me before. Sometimes. We do shows that's like the same expats. Yeah. But here is is a little different. I've been really practicing my crowd work. I did okay, I did like ten minutes of crowd work. Yeah. Out of a twenty minute set. They said it was ten minutes. It felt like much longer. Yeah. But I loved it. I loved it. At the end of the night everyone's like everyone felt really good and everyone was like, Oh, that was the best show you ever did. Yeah. Yeah, so I really am getting to really enjoy it because at first I would be like I'm totally sticking to my script and, and, and I don't even look at people yeah. in the audience in the eyes or nothing and I was like wait a second that's a they're underused as a yeah that's what I felt yeah okay. I just I, that's exactly what I felt I, I, I felt uh, that you've got a, a huge resource here now you know I love you know I wrote some jokes recently, so I did them on Sunday, and it's fun. It's great when you, it's obviously, I don't know if you've heard, but stand-up comedy is a big deal, and people like it. Yeah. Yes, it works. Yeah. But um, it's not the only way of doing a show. Yeah. You know, and yeah. um, for me, I just got tired of manipulating people. It just felt really predictable and yeah. boring, and I felt, and I would just feel physically uncomfortable after a show, okay. because... I'm tricking them. I'm lying to them. A lot of them think, yeah. you know, a lot of people who come to comedy have never been to comedy before, so they think that I'm just going up on stage and just shooting my mouth off and saying these yeah. brilliant things. Yeah. Hopefully, they're brilliant off the top of my head. No, I've written these very carefully, rewritten them, yeah. memorized them, yeah. rehearsed them, yeah. said them on stage a hundred times yeah. before you hear it tonight. Yeah. And so I just felt like, I felt like a. You know, have you ever read the book The Game about this pickup artist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. It felt like God. I'm, I'm, a, I'm just doing that to audiences. Yeah. You know, I'm, 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 I'm giving them lines. Yeah. You know, I'm just, just, deli literally, and that's what comedy is, and, the, yeah. and, and that's and it works and it's yeah. good and that's what people want. Yeah. But I, got, I just felt bad about it, yeah. and, um. So when I stopped, I really stopped. It was like, yeah. it was like quitting smoking. Yeah. It was like I had to tell everybody. I'd yeah. stand, you know, I'd stand up at the front of my show, I'm doing an hour show every day at the Edinburgh Festival. The first four, I, I barely did my jokes because I, I, yeah. I, I didn't want to. I was yeah. putting it off and putting it off. Nice. And I said, right, no more jokes. Just do the whole hour. And I stood up at the front of every show for the next, you know, two weeks and said, guys, there's no content to this show. It's funny, you'll laugh all the way through, but it's only fair you know there are no jokes, there's no material. I'm not gonna do that if that's what you came here for. You're welcome to leave now, it's totally cool, but I'm not gonna do it. Just, I said that for myself, so that I couldn't, I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't sort of coward out right. with 10 minutes to go and start yeah. doing some jokes. Yeah. And at the end of, you know, it was terrifying, Every day there was a moment where I'm thinking, well, no, well now what? Yeah. You know, I'm staring down the barrel of what? There's another 25 minutes to go, and I've got yeah. to, you know. Yeah. But at the end of the hour, my body felt clean yeah. because, um, you know, it, it's just it's it's I think it's a different thing when when you're actually when you say, hey, sir, where are you from? Hear where they're from, and then don't. And don't fire back. You know, when, when they haven't walked into a trap, 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you have a real conversation with someone and it's fun yeah. and, f and you make them laugh, yeah. that's, for me, a cleaner experience for everyone than when you sort of, you're laying traps for people, yeah. which is fun. It's fun. I've done it. We all like it. Yeah. But I think it's a different kind of energy. Do you understand? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's cool, man. Yeah, I've been kind of, yeah, okay. I, I like that, yeah. I don't know, yeah, recently I've been kind of feeling like that, too. I, just, I mean, I got all my jokes and stuff, and I'm like, you know what, I just want to talk to the people in the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Like, where you from, sir? Okay, that's cool. And just go from there, kind of. I, I think it's a lovely thing, yeah. And, yeah. Um, and you never know where it can take you. Four people have met each other in my shows. Yeah. They turned up to my shows, they didn't know each other, yeah. and because of the way I do my comedy, they met each other, yeah. and then they got married. Wow. You know, um, And sometimes, just if you pay attention in the, like one, one of my shows, you, know, the, you, you just don't know who's in the audience, and if, you, yeah. and if you're you know, paying attention, yeah. if you, it, it's exciting. You know, you yeah. can, you know, we had last year, there was an opera singer in the show, mm. and uh, it was just really fun to s hear them. Uh, you know, w it's. I think if you go to an event, yeah. and you find out there was somebody really interesting in the audience with you, yeah, yeah that gives it a little bit of a buzz, yeah. doesn't it? I was there. With Oprah, or yeah. Yeah, yeah, or a famous person, yeah, you know. Yeah. Or, um, yeah. No, famous people don't tend to come to my shows. Um, although we did have, we did have some. We had the, the, the Bond director Sam Mendes That's pretty was in my show. That's pretty damn and, famous. And and I, because I don't know who famous people are. Right. He was in my show. He was interacting with me. He right. was in the show, and and I even at that point I was, as I was. Uh, saying goodbye at the end of the show I, I sort of honoured the people that were in the show if you like and yeah. I, you know, I said well you know if, this, if the show was a film yeah. for example yeah. this lady here her name would be on the poster yeah. probably her face yeah. this guy here if it was a film his name would pr probably be on the poster yeah. but I don't think his face would be yeah. and I said that to Sam Mendes and I didn't know I was saying it to <laughs> Sam Mendes after the show the venue emailed me and was like yeah. That's the most famous person we've ever had at our theatre. Nice. And I'm like, who was? Yeah. The man that you referred to as Blue Man all the way through the show. <laughs> Blue Man is Sam Mendes. <laughs> Who's Sam Mendes? He directed the Bond movies. <laughs> oh my God. You know. So cool. So, uh, wow. Um, that's yeah, so that's, that's, but tonight it'll just be a stand-up. Thing. Right, there might uh, be somebody famous there. But uh, if there is, you know, it's on everybody else to notice because uh, yeah. I'm not very good at spotting them. Well, I don't know if McConaughey and, uh, and uh, Woody Harrelson left yet. They're in town for a little Are they? Yeah. What are they doing here? They're checking out the museums and stuff. Are they just on holiday? They're not filming? No, they're filming something. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know if they're still here. They might be. I think they're in Hanoi. Because they, 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 they film stuff together quite a lot. They do. Those two. Yeah, yeah. They were really great in yeah. uh, True Detective, weren't they? So good. So yeah. good. So it's nothing to do with True Detective. They're not reprising. I it. don't know. It was very hush-hush. They just had a few pictures. and they're That's the obvious thing that it would be. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Oh, I wish, oh, that'd be cool. When they <laughs> film it. Vietnam's opening to a lot of film stuff right now. Because it's like cheaper to film here. Sunny all the time, so it's kind of like L.A. Yeah. And uh, I guess once you get permits and everything, it's pretty easy to get rolling. Yeah. Yeah. How exciting. Yeah, fly. So fly how do you in. know they're here? Uh, Facebook. Uh, Facebook post. Your Facebook friends with Matthew McConaughey. Yes. Wow. I got a ah, you don't speak to me to this. Damn. I got a McConaughey joke okay. before he came here, and then he came here, and I got to use it. I was like, yes. What's, what is the joke? Okay. Uh, yeah, Vietnam's getting a lot of celebrities coming. Um, 
I saw Matthew McConaughey the other day. I said, Matthew, what are you doing here? You're going to do like the Brad Pitt thing and Brad Pitt Cambodia thing? You're going to move here? And he said, Doong Roy, Doong Roy, Doong Roy. And what does that mean? It means all right, all right, all right in Vietnamese. And why is that funny? McConaughey, you know, any, you McConaughey? All yeah. right, all right, all right, you know? His tagline, that's his thing. Is it? Uh, from what? Yeah. From what? Uh, everything. Okay. He's walking here, it's all this. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm sorry. I think he says it in real life. I'm not sure what it was from, but I know, everybody knows McConaughey says, all right, all right, all right. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Brad Pitt lives in Cambodia. He killed. That joke killed. There's a baby person Don't sitting in that seat right there, and they got it. Because it has to be, the only people that are going to get this joke is that no Matthew McConaughey says Doom Roy. So that's me out. And, uh, and, and no, Doom Roy means all right in, in English. Right, so it's a good joke. So it's like, it's, it's, a, a, yeah. it's a joke for me and that I share. Yeah, but when people get the, it. The but elite they, few. Right, they know. Yes. They know yeah. that they're in the club that can and get they're it. they're like, damn, how did he... Think of that. What kind of weed was he smoking? Good weed. It's good. Yes. So Brad Pitt lives in Cambodia. I believe, believe him and Joe Lee were there, were like on and off for years, mm. right? Picking up kids in Phnom Penh. Who knows? I don't know. Okay. Probably. I think they're doing like a lot of work there and okay. pick, grabbing babies. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So. So you've done UK, you've done all of Asia. What, what was your favorite place that you have performed so far? Um, well, my favorite room is, is Good Heavens in, in Tokyo. Ah. Because it, it's, I don't know what it is. It's, it's a perfect shaped room. Okay. Paul and Hisako, I think it really, it's re it always helps when you just know that the people who have booked you love you. Yes. Um, and then it is a great room. It's a, it's, it's a you know, it's, it's, it's an oblong shape like this room. Okay. The stage is on the long wall. Like so you're, ne wall. you're never too far away from everybody. Oh, um, so the stage is on in the middle of the Yeah, you, I mean, I would always have the stage there okay. because the furthest person from from you uh, is not that far from you. Whereas okay. if the stage is there, right, 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 you've right. got lots and lots of people a oh, long way away from that's you. Cool. That's so a um, idea. so you get a buzz in there, um, that. and you can pack it. Uh, yeah. So that that's my favorite room. Okay. Because and I've got, there's a lovely room in, in London, of course, that I love. Um, but um, yeah, out out here. That's great. The box office in uh, the Speakeasy Theatre in Phnom Penh is also really nice. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, where else? Uh, yeah, those are my. That, that's in, in Asia. Those are my favourites right. by some way. Because right. uh, they're yeah, kind of dedicated. They're kind of dedicated comedy rooms. Right, right. I like those. Um, rather than, you know converted restaurants right um, closed down bars yes you know areas near a swimming pool stuff like that which can all be good they can all work you know, you know what you're performing at a French restaurant tonight and so am I right my they're two fancy French restaurants I'm doing one in D7 you're doing in D2 that's crazy right have you ever performed in USA I did um, I played, I can't remember his name, William, in uh, a Shakespeare production, oh. uh, As You Like It. I was in As You Like It in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada oh, Mountains, sweet. two hours northeast of Sacramento in uh, Northern California, not far from your neck of the woods. Well, uh, what was the name of the city? Um, well the closest city would have been Yuba City. Oh, I love Yuba City. Yeah, yeah, so it's a bit far from Yuba City. Um, uh, Oregon House is the, is the sort of, you know, one horse hmm. um, town where it's near. There's a vineyard called uh, Renaissance Wines. Huh. Um, 
and uh, and so yeah, I did. Uh, I did. That was an extraordinary production in a, in a recreated. Uh, what, do they, what do they call it? Fake um, uh, imitation mock Greek amphitheatre oh. um, cut into the hills. You know. Oh, yeah, extraordinary Sound. place. Stand up wise, good. I've never. I did two mics in New York. Uh, in when would that have been? Two thousand and five, two thousand and six. Yeah. Um, but um, I don't know. It's I, I I I don't know. I go where people want me to go, and I guess no one ever wants me to go to the U.S. So hmm. um, that's you know I, I I came to Bangkok because Aiden invited me, and, yeah. and then and then he put put on a tour for me, um, and then I come back. Because people invite me, you know, yeah. and Keith. The reason I'm in Vietnam, let's be honest, is because Ankita yeah. invited me, yeah. and then I invited myself to do dance gigs. Right. Um, but um, yeah, so I'm, you know, I went to Amsterdam because I was invited, um, Berlin because I was invited. Wherever I go, I, I think that's the best, you know, um, is to go where at least one person wants you. Yeah. yeah. I did a tour. My only real tour of the UK was a tour of, of people's houses. I played people's houses because I have a, people do, I have fans, I have people, I get messages saying to me, yeah. when are you going to come and play my town? Yeah. And the answer is, well, I'm not going to come and play <laughs> your town because you are the only person in your town that even knows who I am, yeah. <laughs> let alone wants. Um, and then I thought, that's a boring message to send. Yeah. So I said, I'll play your town. Uh, you need to pay me 300 pounds and I will play your town yeah. in your living room or kitchen or yeah. wherever. Yeah. And I did a 50 date tour um, like that. Uh, and it was fantastic. It was fantastic. Wow. Um, and the shows were great because yeah. there was one person <laughs> that really wanted me there yeah. but everybody else was their friends yeah, yeah. and uh, you know I played word of mouth yeah and, 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 and like, this guy's awesome come on that's right. cool that's and, cool. and, and, and you know they were amazing experiences yeah. fantastic gigs yeah so um, that's cool so that's wow. that's how I like to roll is, is rather and, and, and because I, I you know I Airbnb my place in London. Yeah. Um, so that means that I don't have to gig when I'm out here. I don't have to gig every night. Right. Right. Um, I have. I've got a book of poetry and a book of jokes. Uh, yeah. Philosophy. I've got a book of philosophy and a book of poetry. Uh -huh. So I, I sell those after the shows. Uh -huh. Some, you know, sometimes. Um, so you're a writer too. So not really, but you know, I have. I have, I, I have a way of of m making it more economically viable what ah, I'm doing you know what I mean selling um, hawking your wares that's brilliant yeah nice. and then I'm you know I can help with other things when I'm out here I can I, I can do workshops and and I do my online stuff yeah. so it means I can uh, I can play gigs that aren't necessarily yeah. financially self sustaining Right, right. In this part of the world. Yeah. You know. And it's also, well, I know how to live very cheaply out here as well. Yeah. So that's yeah. why, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I don't know how many comedians are actually, what do they call them, working comedians? That, like, you know, how many comedians in the world? Maybe 10,000 that actually go on stage and do comedy. But how, how many have been able to, like, quit their day job and, like, only... Comedy, probably like I don't know. ten percent of that. I don't know. I'm I mean, just making up numbers that probably well, for are totally me, I, incorrect. I did it for five years, um, and uh, mm. and it was really, it was wonderful yeah. to be able to. You know, yeah. I, I, I didn't make any money outside right. of it was just stand up. That's cool. But I did. It was like I had to, to in order to do it. I had to do it every night. Yeah, had to have a car. Yeah. had to drive yeah. um, a lot of hours every day yeah. and when I 
I, I stopped it. I, 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 uh, and were you telling jokes or were you doing your like new bit stuff? Of, I was, uh, no, I was telling jokes. So okay. I, I mean, as much as I ever did, but yeah. Okay. Um, and when I stopped, um, I, it, it, I'd never, I, when I came back to comedy, it was like, I, I can't do that again. And um, right. and yeah. so and I, I'm, a, I'm a better comedian now, yeah. probably as a result. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I. Uh, yeah, it's fifteen hundred days, right? I mean, my math is totally fucked. I don't know, but I just became yeah. Like a lot. I just became good at playing really bad rooms. Yeah. Really awful crowds. Nice. You know. Um, yeah, and that's a skill actually that nobody needs to have. You know, yeah, <laughs> it's oh, a it's a great skill. It's not, it's not, it's a great skill if those are the gigs you're playing, which is why <coughs> I learnt it, but it, it's um, not a useful... Tough uh, room, though, that's, you got to be able to break that tough room. Um, maybe, maybe. Um, <laughs> it's you know. just like good room, give me a good room, I don't want a tough room anymore. Well, yeah, I mean, I have a different attitude now, there are, I, you know, I've played some tough rooms recently. Okay. And uh, and I, I you know I can't you know I can't, there are lots of things I can't say anymore to to, to, to audiences. Yeah. You know, I can't I can't if there's somebody if there's a you know difficult person in the room I can't destroy them. Yeah, yeah. Because because what what's everybody else going to think? You know now in the old days I could because right. what's everybody else going to think? Everybody else is going to think we better shut up and listen to this guy. Yeah, yeah. But my show my show now. Yeah. Is my show now is a is a communal experience. Okay. So I can't if I've got a difficult person in the room, I have to, I have to love them oh, into Jesus the room. Christ. You know, I, c I can't destroy them and carry on. Yeah. Because there's nothing to carry on with. So you want hecklers now? Well, it's not that I want hecklers. Um, it's just that when there's when there are difficult people, you know, yeah. people with personality disorders due to life or alcohol. Um, the old tactics, or the tactics that probably most comics can use, right. you know, humiliate, right. set an example, yeah. go back to the script. Yeah. Well, there is no script, yeah. or if there is a script, it's the room, yeah. and now the room are terrified of saying anything unless you do what you just did to them. To, to, to them. So, so do you see what I mean? So now so cool. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to a gunfight yeah. um, with with a, with a pencil. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no pencil. Right. Because there's no script. There we go. Um, or the flower. Oh, you're going to heckle me? Come on up, sir. I want to hear more, right? Like, kind of like, you, you, don't, you don't fire them. You just like, just oh, gotta, really? You just gotta Tell me more about that. You just mm -hmm. got to love them to death. Yeah. You know, oh, that's um, cool. I love it. I love that philosophy. Um, that's cool. Hell, I wish I could see your shoulder man. Ah, so what are you doing? All right, let's 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 find out Trevor's schedule, okay? Usually I let you plug your show, but your show is tonight, and I won't have this edited and posted till tomorrow. So plug your next show. I'm doing. I'm, pl I'm playing uh, Hanoi, but that's, that's too late. Then I'm, I'm, I'm doing. If you're in Phuket. Phuket. Uh, on the sixth of. Uh, April. I'm doing a full-length show, a proper show there at the uh, the Merlin Beach Marriott Hotel wow. Resort and Spa. Wow, that sounds. It's an, e an fancy. evening with yours truly. Um, and then. So like they have robes at that place. There might be a secret gig in a secret country that I can't reveal um, <laughs> uh, in the region. <laughs> and then uh, my next big show is. 21st of April in London. Oh. I'm I'm now art, Damien. Ooh. Okay, I am art. Nice. They've they put me in an art gallery, and I'm doing my show as performance art. Oh shit! So uh, the first show I ever did like this was called Community Circle, yeah. in which there was a script, if you like. Yeah. Uh, very loosely, I would read out what people had written down. I give I give pads and pens to four people in in the room, yeah. and they have to write down their observations experiences it's 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 a social experiment yeah. um, to determine if if reality 
it exists and people just write down their reality and I read it out and that's that show and uh, so I'm doing that on the 21st of April I haven't done that for four years um, and that is the only show in plan this year huh. in, in the Coleman Project space in Bermondsey then I do a little tour down in, down in dear old Devon in England, the countryside, mm -hmm. and then I go to Holland, the Netherlands, in May uh, for a run of shows in all sorts of lovely towns and places in, in, in Amsterdam and uh, Utrecht and places places in the Netherlands. Oh, so cool. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you have a listenership in the Netherlands. Um, I don't have many listeners, but yeah. Netherlands, get on the ball, baby. You're missing out. Yeah, and uh, my my comedy writing workshop will be starting up again. So it's a it's a it's a group workshop. Yeah. You find me on Facebook. Uh, we do little groups. It's me plus three comics. Okay. And uh, it's about an hour and a half, two hours. Everybody does a five minute bit, gets feedback from everybody else, okay. and then I go through it line by line and give you homework. Right. And uh, nice. very effective way of either improving your current set exponentially yeah. or writing. Um, some people use it to write their, their, their hour. Wow. Um, and so that is, that'll be, when I get back to England, that'll be happening again. Yeah. Um, Seven, joke doctor. What's up with the joke doctor? I've seen something on your Facebook. Well, it's, I call it what joke hospital. Joke hospital. Because, it, hospital, because it, makes, right. it, makes, it makes your material get better. Right. And uh, I used to do it everywhere I toured that didn't have a big English language comedy scene. Okay. If I was doing a show, I would do one of these workshops for the local comics. Mm. Then when COVID hit, I had to cancel a, a load of tours and a load of these, but I decided well, why not do it online? And then it really took off online because loads of comics were not working. Right. right. And then since people have gone back, we still do it because it, it's just useful for people. Mm. Um, How do you join? Uh, you just find me on Facebook and just send me a message okay. and then I add you to the group okay. and then when I'm doing some sessions I'll ping it out. I do them one on one or I do them groups. The groups are cheaper um, and arguably okay. you know, more fun in a way because you, you right. get to meet people from different parts of the world. You know, right. You'll be on with someone from the Netherlands or someone from South Africa or you know, you'll, you'll be on with different people. Nice. Um, so that's a thing to plug. Shit. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. Well, let me see. Did I check everything off? <laughs> yep. Pretty much. And we did, we're like at an hour, so. Um, how long yeah. is it going to be? How, how long How long do they I go for? do an hour. Uh, the, you, you, but you edit it, though, don't you? You, you don't even edit it. No. Oh man, there's loads of things to think of. I don't worry, Trevor. He's going to edit this out. No. I don't know. I, I like to keep it real. With the oh audience. my god. Sometimes I just I do in the coffee shop and the ladies making coffee in the back. What? What's what's the problem, no, Trevor? Problem, Trevor, no. what's wrong? <laughs> Joke doctor? What? Could help me, Trevor. If I'd known this was going to be. Unedited. What do you want me to do? Cut it down to fifteen minutes? I think there's a fifth. There's, I think I've said about fifteen minutes of good this stuff. This is yeah. a long form video podcast oh, God. that I might not even upload. That's that's just more kidding. like it. That's I just like got it. you here. That's more like this it. This isn't even a real camera. Yeah. No, just God. kidding. This is Who are those little people in there? A real salad, though. Look at this. You want some? No, thank you. I can't eat salad after uh, after sweet things. Yes, I know. Um, no, why you want to do more? No, 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 no. I'm, what, I'm what, what are you saying, Trevor? I don't. I, I don't I, get your dry English humor, man. No, me neither. No, I just, it's just. Uh, uh, You're too just, witty I, for me, Trevor. No, no, You're too no, no, witty. No, 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 quite, you know, Dumb it down, okay? Dumb it down a little for it's me. It's very hot in uh, wherever we are outside in in Saigon. Yeah, and it, my brain struggles. Yeah, so. Um, I find it really hard to do my comedy <laughs> in these places. It's really fun because my brain oh. is working slower. Now yeah. that's not necessarily a problem for comedy. Right. All it means is everything happens slower. Yes. And mm -hmm. when you've got a lot of people speaking English as their second language, 
you know. So I don't necessarily get many Vietnamese people, many Cambodian people. They do come, but not many. But yeah. I do get people yeah. who speak English as a second language. Yes. Speaking slowly, yeah. thinking slowly, yeah. is not a disadvantage. Okay. But when you're doing a podcast with someone who speaks English as their first language, yeah. I did feel that I was a little bit um, not, the words weren't really flowing, yeah. and uh, um, I was struggling to find a thing to say, yeah, you know. Because yeah. I have to be careful with the coffee here. I run on coffee. Yeah, yeah. me too. But Vietnamese coffee is so strong. Crack. It, I go straight from zero to panic attack. It's crack, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so I, I struggle because yeah. I'm, I'm either half asleep yeah. or having a panic attack. Yeah. And I'm not joking. It's you know. my life. I know. I know. So where do you drink coffee? Uh, I usually every morning I make my own coffee. Yeah, you got to make your own. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because you can't drink coffee in the, in the shop. Uh, you can. But, well, you, but it's too you, strong. You got to be careful because sometimes they give you the syrup. And the syrup is fucking strong. Right. Okay, that's where you start fucking sweating. So... So if they brew it in that little thing and yeah. you see it dripping down, yeah. that's good. But if they already have it in the fridge and it's fucking it looks like straight used motor oil. Okay. And they'll fucking mix it with a little milk. It should get your heart going. Yeah, I've had like if you smoke a little weed and then drink one of those, bro, you're like, oh shit. It's like you're paranoid and fucking amped up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's, it's rocket fuel. Vietnamese coffee. It's the second biggest coffee exporting country in the world. Did you know that? I did know that. And do you know you why did. I knew that? Why? Because I've just been to the lap. And one of the uh, things I did in the lap, I went to a weasel farm. <laughs> did you eat? Did you well, I haven't yet. I've got it. So I met the weasels. They showed me the weasels. <laughs> do you know what they also had there? <laughs> Elephants. And do you know what they the eat, elephants do? Eat coffee and poop yeah, it out. They do. So I've got a packet of weasel coffee and a packet of elephant coffee to take home to England. I would like to try the elephant coffee. Wow. Yeah. Elephants eat the coffee and they poo it out and then they. I don't know. They, well, I, tell, they, I know. The so bean. The right? bean. The bean doesn't digest in, inside either the weasel or the elephant, and somebody has the job of going through the elephant dung, and getting out the uh, beans uh, and they wash the beans yeah. roast the beans yeah. and then you've got coffee now have you had weasel coffee no no, no. okay I, I haven't either okay. but I'm you know I'm curious you no know what it would, is it like magic that it's been inside an animal now? it's very expensive yeah. uh, I went to a place in Dalat and I was asked to leave because they just took one look at me and they knew <laughs> They basically, I, I said, I was really curious. I said, this is weasel coffee. And they're like, yeah, the workers, the people, the, yeah. the, the young people who were there were yeah. sort of indulging me. Going, yes, this is weasel coffee. Yeah. Can you explain? Yes. And they yeah. took me into a, one of six rooms. Mm -hmm. They've got these special little tasting rooms. And I went into an empty tasting room. And there's all this weasel coffee and uh, lovely little cups and saucers and chairs where obviously yeah. people are going to come in and drink some weasel coffee and taste it and see yeah. if they want to buy it. Yeah. And uh, the owner turned up and he yeah. just looked at me and he went, oh, get out of And I was like, oh, okay. And I said to the, one of the... Can't afford this. <laughs> I said, uh, am, I, am, I, am I not supposed to be here then? And she said, no, it's just for South Koreans. <laughs> and then a big group of South so Koreans true. were ushered in. Yeah. And they went into one of the six special tasting rooms. Yeah. And it's a big deal. It's... it's yeah. um, by so uh, two the, a good coffee 250 grams of coffee in in England would be about I don't know five pounds would it five pounds for 250 grams I think so right, right. Um, this weasel coffee here in Vietnam before I've taken it into the UK was 15 pounds so it's three times as expensive here yeah as it is retail as normal coffee is there, so it's okay. it's expensive. Okay. Um, but I don't know what the benefits are, or the, I don't know if you can, I, can, I smelt it, I smelt the beans, yeah. and it didn't smell weaselly. No. Okay? I smelt the weasel, 
uh-huh. and uh, you know, it, there's no relation between the smell of the weasel and the smell of the uh, bean. The bean smelt chocolatey, smelt fantastic. Okay. Now maybe it's a scam. Maybe they've got some weasels and normal coffee, and you know. Maybe it's one of those tricks, but I don't think so. It's in a very elaborate scam because they've also got elephants. Yeah. Um, I just just feed them the beans, you know. Does, does the bean like digest? Like it doesn't digest. That's the point. They eat so the bean what, and it passes through whole. So, w- what exactly happens to the different? bean? I don't know. It's got, it's got to just have a little bit of elephant poo flavour, surely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can't really wash that off, right? Uh, I know. Poo kind of stays. Right? But uh, it apparently it's hard to find weasel coffee here in, in, in Vietnam. Yeah. Have you tried the bird nest? Bird nest soup? Yeah. I and thought that was Chinese. Tree. No, they have it here. Oh, really? I've had it, yeah. I've been to the, the factories. It was a, they have a house with just a hole. And the whole house is for the birds. And the birds come in and they make a nest in the corner with their spit. Yeah. And then every month or so, some guy with a stick collects all the bird nests. And they're like hard, hard uh, spit. It's bird spit. Yeah. And then they fucking boil them up in a pot or something. And then you get a cup of that and you drink it. It's supposed to be like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's really expensive. These people make a lot of money. Off the, like one little nest is like a hundred bucks. Wow. Wow. Well, yeah, it's supposed to be like really good for your vitality. Or oh. Healthy. Something. Yeah. Yeah, they got a lot of stuff like that. Uh, tiger blood, all that shit. Rhino horn. Is, is, it, oh, it, it, is the tiger native to Vietnam? I believe, I mean, I know it's in like Thailand. Well, Southeast Asia, I guess it could travel anywhere in Southeast Asia. Yeah, right? It used to have, there used to be the yeah. Malaysian tiger. Right, right. And, and I, but I guess that's extinct now. Probably. So there must have been a Thai tiger. Yeah. Or, 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 or everyone, I mean. Oh, bro, there used to be lions all the way up to fucking England. I know. So yeah, I like know. in France, Italy yeah, had yeah. lions. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So I'm sure there used to be tigers. Yeah. Yeah, easily. Because now they're all in like India, right? They probably killed them all here and, and uh, got all the, the marrow for their little stuff. And it, 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 there's tigers here that you could buy a tiger right now. Really? I think it's like 30 grand. 30 dong grand or 30, 30 US grand? 30 US grand. Get you a nice frozen tiger. Frozen? Yeah, it's dead. Want? It's already been, yeah, it's ready to go. Ready to eat? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know the numbers, but yeah, it's probably. Secret, don't tell anybody that. Anyway, we gotta go, everyone. We're gonna get some tigers across the street. <laughs> Taking him. That's why I really brought Trevor because I knew he likes weasel poop. He's gonna <laughs> like tigers. All right, Trevor. Thanks for coming on the show, man. It's a pleasure. Thank yeah, you for having me, Daniel. Yeah. Thank Trevor you. Trevor Locke, everybody, check out his shows, his his websites, Facebook, Instagram. Don't check out my website. There's nothing on my Trevor website. Locke yeah, yeah, yeah. Com. Um, uh, Instagram at the Trevor Locke. Insta. Hit yeah. him up on the Insta. Yeah, yeah. All right. XLT Podcast. I'm Damien Cole. We're at Eddie's. Have a nice day, everyone. Thanks for watching. Say bye, Trevor. Bye, Trevor.